So allow me to start with the, the first UML diagram. And this UML diagram that you're supposed to start with is what you call the use case diagrams. And uh, I will share my notes here, but uh, before I share some notes, uh, there are things that I want first of all to clarify so that we can understand uh, these things that we need to have. So I want to use a PowerPoint. Uh, allow me to use PowerPoint presentation. So in this case, eh, So if you are talking about use case, those are two words. Uh, meaning uh, this is something that has to be done by a given person. And uh, that person now becomes, uh, that activity that is supposed to be performed by a person becomes a use case. So when you look at uh, a use case in definition, we say, it is a presentation of all activity. So the key one is presentation. Presentations of all activities that are supposed to be used in uh, maybe a certain scenario that we have already given. And uh, I think I can give you a scenario. I think I have posted the scenarios that we'll be using. And this is the first scenario that we'll be using of which we'll be having others and uh, maybe we try to interpret what we are supposed to have within the presentation. So that's why we are saying it is a presentation, presentation of all activities. And uh, if you look at these activities, we can sometimes call them processes. So it is a presentation of processes. And uh, these processes, they must be performed by who? A person. Uh, this person is called an actor. So in our own interpretation, we must try to create a correlation or to create some relations between activities and an actor. We are supposed to make sure that now there is a relation between another actor, between an actor with another actor. We must always show the symbolic presentation of an actor and a process in this scenario. So in a, our own case, eh, I'll use paint to define these uh, symbols uh, that are mostly used in these UML diagrams or these, uh, these use case diagram. One of them that we have uh, is an actor. And when you're using an actor, we always present an actor with uh, a person, a presentation of a person, and then we have some processes that we are supposed to have. And these processes are supposed to be used in a, a given data presentation. And uh, this is what we are calling a process. So remember, whatever we are having right here, it is not a rectangle. It is not a rectangle. It is not a rectangle. It is a curved rectangle. It is a curved rectangle. So at the end here, it is curved. It is always curved. When you're using now an actor, we are supposed to present an actor, the name of an actor at the bottom. We're supposed to present the name of an actor at the bottom of this sable, at the bottom of this sable. So in our own data presentation, we can say this actor is supposed to do a certain activity. And uh, when he or she is doing a certain activity, you must be able to follow a certain process. So this is now what you call a relation. So here, we need to create what you call a relation. And uh, when you create this relation, we can say, there are different types of relations that we have uh, in use case. Eh? And uh, one of the relations that we have uh, is what you call uses. So we have a relation called uses. So in most cases, eh, when you're presenting these use cases, we always present these relations with less than, so we have two less than, 
and greater than. So inside that, there is a relation. The next one that we have, uh, I think maybe I can use PowerPoint. So we have what you call uh, relations. And these relations or the relationships that we have, uh, one of them we have what you call uses, relation. Then we have another one which says we have include relations. Then we have another one which expects relations. So this one is not include, it is use includes. So in this case, eh, we can now try to interpret uh, which uses the other. So in this case, eh, we use a dotted line, that like that. And this one still uses a dotted line like that. And this one still uses a dotted line. But now, the way we present them, that is where now we need to understand eh, in that. Just look as an example, before we go to a certain example, we must be able to understand there are other, there are other symbols that we use. So one of the symbols that we have talked about is what you call an actor. Then the next one we have talked about is what you call processes. But when you come to the use case, we call them use, use case, use case. And uh, that is why we have already said uh, the use case is now the presentation of the activities that you are supposed to do in a given time or in a given moment. Then after that, we have said we need to use some relations. And uh, when you use some relations, one of the relations that we have talked about is uses include extends. Then we have talked about actors, where this actor, we have already presented actors using a person. Remember, we must present the way I have presented it. That means it is a person who is doing that. But when you are presenting this, eh, make sure that when you are writing them, you are able to write, and uh, at the bottom, maybe you can write customer. So remember, this is a customer, depending on the scenario that we have already been given. Then this customer is supposed to communicate. So this person is communicating with Remember this is carved, and I'm sorry, I'm not carving it the right way. Remember, I'm using some script or scripting. Eh? So in this case, eh, we can say there is activity A. And when you're using this activity that you are supposed to have here, we don't, we use a straight line. So this is a straight line. There are some people uses with an arrow. It is not uh, bad to use it, but if you use it without an arrow, it's still okay. So for this case, when you're moving from an actor to a process or an actor to a use case, we use a straight line. We use a straight line without the arrow or we can use the arrow, but I would prefer we use without arrows. So omit this arrow. But the moment we use a relation, uh, I think maybe I can still use a PowerPoint so that I can be able to interpret that. When I'm using an actor, to an actor, an actor to an actor, we use dependency. We use dependency relation. We use dependency relation. This class is depending from another. Like now, I can talk about uh, maybe a parent. Maybe we have a parent, a parent, and uh, we have uh, a child or we have a student, let me call it a student. Remember, a student can also be a parent and a parent can also be a student. So it means eh, it doesn't matter whether you, are a, uh, whether you are a parent being a student. So you can be a parent as long as, as the time, as the same time you are still a student. So it doesn't uh, depend on that. So the moment we look at this, eh, maybe we can say we are having a parent and at the bottom we are having a student so this class that we are having here, it is trying to depend eh, with another class. So we present this, eh, sorry, we present this with a straight line, but this straight line should have an arrow. So meaning 
This is a class con parent, and this is another class con student. But these two classes, one of them is the superior of the other. So it means you can be a parent and you are not a student. You can be a parent and you are a student. So a student derives some attributes from the parent. So this becomes a derivative. So this becomes the subclass, this becomes the parent class. So in this case, eh, when you try to present this, eh, and I think you'll be able to allow me to use uh, maybe paint, uh, or maybe I can allow this. So I can draw this. Then within here, I draw an actor. And when I draw an actor, I can be able to present this actor as a parent. Remember, this is now the way we are supposed to present this. Then in, uh, below here, we can now write maybe parent. Remember, when you are using this use case, eh, we are not supposed to write the actor name at the top here or beside. We are supposed to write at the bottom. So that is now the time that you want to write it. So in this case, eh, we can now have another class eh, and I will call this class maybe a student. So for this case, if uh, maybe I can try to relate this, eh? allow me to group these so that I can be able to copy them. Uh, it is not accurate as given, but uh, you'll be able to understand. Eh? You'll be able to understand. Allow me to group. Just a minute. So allow me to group so that they can be together. So when I copy this, maybe I paste it somewhere here and then I bring it here. So in this case, what we can see here, we have parent and we have another one, we call it a student. So in this case now, we need to relate or we need to create a relation. And when you create a relation, we move this arrow to this. So we have now created what you call a dependency relation. So one class is depending from another. Which class is depending from another? The child class, which is a student class, is depending from a parent. Because we are saying you can be a parent and it is not a must to be a student. You can still be a parent and you be a student. So it means that relation, one of them is superior. And how will you, will you be able to interpret on how we can be able to come up with an actor? Because we can use uh, nouns to do that. Uh, maybe when you read a statement or when you did a, a scenario, we can be able to establish that using some uh, presentation of an English-like statements, uh, which uh, defines a noun. And we come up with an actor that has to be given on that. So for this case, uh, we have already presented an actor. Then this actor is able now to present some actions. And maybe we can say the action that has to be presented is maybe an action, and that's why we have said we use a curved one that we have here. And we can be able to interpret it. Maybe we say that we have some relation, that we are having that, that we are having a relation on this. And this one is connecting with this. So we say, any activity that is being performed here, maybe if you are saying purchasing, if you say it is purchasing, so, uh, or maybe booking, uh, let's present this as a, uh, maybe booking, booking a unit. So if you look at now this booking, we can say this presentation that we are having, a parent book for an exam. So the same case, eh? this parent who is still a student can book an exam. So we can be able to interpret uh, other scenarios that we always have. Eh? And uh, maybe we can say uh, we have a client, we have a client as a class, and then we can have a customer. So in this case, eh, what we are saying is we have a client and a customer, where the client can be a customer. 
I'm selling Skuma Wiki at this time, eh? but now I can still be a customer in another organization. I can be a customer in buying floats. I'm selling Skuma Wiki uh, as, a, as a person who is now offering these services, but afterwards I can become now a customer. So in that case, so we are looking at, at now a presentation of one class eh, doing many other functions that are not within his or her uh, premises that we always have. So that's why we are saying, uh, maybe I can present this using maybe some uh, notes that I have uh, so that we can be able to understand those use cases that I have already talked about. So in this case, eh, just look at this aspect where we have uh, the use case. So we are saying these are behavioral model. Remember we said we have behavioral model, we have dynamic model or static models that we said, and that's why we said, let us now, uh, we moved from here, uh, we moved from static, we moved from, from static modeling, then we are now on behavioral modeling. We are now on behavioral modeling. And when you talk about behavioral modeling, we have two main behavioral modeling. We have use case and activity diagrams. And that's why I want today maybe we can be able to look at those two diagrams and be able to understand on how we can come up with different scenarios. So we are saying actions that are performed in a system, they comprise the operations. That is the process. It expresses within the system. Just look at the system that you are doing currently. Maybe you have a system, you have a, a proposal that you are writing currently. But that proposal that you are writing currently, it has different procedures or different functions that you are supposed to do. So how can you come up with a use case using the scenarios that we have or using those different forms that we have? So in this case, that's why we are saying this use case diagram has various presentations or has various symbolic presentations. And one of the symbolic presentations that we have uh, is what you call the use case. So in most of the books, they use these circles or they use the oval or they can use this kind of a presentation. So that's why I'm saying it is curved. But suppose we want to use uh, uh, this use case that we have here as an oval. So because I would prefer we use that, uh, if you go to an advanced, we can use that. So we use this as a presentation of a use case. And uh, this is now the activity. Remember, I have said it's like we have a curved rectangle. And then after that, we can say the first use case that we have, maybe we can have the use case name. This is the pay bill. So we write it inside. We write it inside. Maybe we say this is borrowing. Borrowing. Borrowing books. Then after that, we have some actors. These are people who are supposed to do some activities in a given system. There's an element that performs a use case and which leads to an observable results. So this is a person who makes sure that this action or this process is fulfilled or acted upon and there is an action that has to be uh, given on that. And what we are supposed to note on this is eh, uh, we need to note that an actor is a human being. So note that an actor is a human being, is a hardware, so we can say is a hardware device, or can be another system. So we are talking about bank system, then we talk about school management system. That becomes another actor, the whole of that. Like now we are looking at now, uh, Equity Bank is able to facilitate or maybe to give some functions or maybe some activities that now the school has to use, maybe uh, borrowing money or maybe sending some fees uh, through the bank. So instead of going to the bank, maybe you use a, a pay bill, then you pay automatically to reflect in school. I can see one of the, maybe the university that is doing that, uh, when you use a pay bill, is able to reflect directly. One of them is a KCA, the other one is a Mount Kenya University. So if you look at those systems, those are systems that are interlinked with other systems. Because uh, when I am in a KCE or MKU, I don't have to go to the bank. If I go to the bank, yes, I pay, automatically I go to my portal. I can be able to see everything that I have paid, uh, maybe within 24 hours. So that is now a reflection. 
of now presenting a graphical way of uh, interpreting this, eh? but now that is the actor which is now performing that. And uh, we can see now the actor has uh, a graphical presentation, and this graphical presentation that we have uh, is now a person. So this person is now presented somewhere, and this person is now able to do some duties which has already been provided to him or to her. So that's why we are saying, just present this symbolic presentation and we now term it as a customer because there is a customer who is doing some job or doing some activities in that. So we can now try to create on how we can be able to try to interrelate them. And now we are saying we have interrelation. Remember I have said we can use an arrow uh, that has a pointed arrow or we can use a straight line. So it can work. So for this one, we are having an association where this actor is associating with a certain activity. And this activity has already been given here, where this activity says a customer pay bill, a customer pay bill. Uh, let me first of all pose at that point. Eh? And I want to go back. Maybe I use a, a scenario on a bank a bank system so when i use a bank system there are things that we need maybe we can use bank system and uh, maybe there is a person who wants to withdraw bank system on use of atm automatic uh, automated terror machine so when you're using the automated terror machine or the ATM, now what comes in your mind is eh, you must look at all the processes that are undertaken by this person. So we can say there are two systems here. And uh, one system is maybe we can call it the DB or the database system. We can call it the database system. Then the next one we can call a customer. Those are two people who are working with this system. Because when I key in my password, automatically it must be verified by the system. So when it is verified by the system, so remember behind that now we can say there is somebody who is now uh, maybe a clerk who is doing that. So there is a clerk that, uh, who is doing that, but we cannot see this clerk. What we can see in our mind is the DB system which is now verifying all the credentials. <coughs> then when it verifies all the credentials, so automatically we can be able to see the reflections of uh, what we have within the system. So these two things eh, that we are having here, we can now call them, uh, these things that we have here, we can now call them actors. Maybe the name of a person, the name of a praise, maybe the system that is doing that, etc then what can we do with this system what can we do with this system maybe we can look at processes so these processes that we are having here and uh, one of the process that we can have uh, just a minute so we can say this person can uh, key in password in password but before we key in the password there is something else that we have to do in search card in search card when in search card then there is another process key in password then when you key in password there is a verification so password verification so from the password verification now that is the time that you can do what you call select or maybe we can do some options. So which option are you selecting? One option that you can select is withdraw. Is withdraw. Maybe we can have deposit. Maybe we can have transfer, etc. Those are few. But these options 
you cannot do them together. You do one by one. But there is one option here. Maybe we can say perform transaction. Perform transactions. So we can say we perform transaction. But which are these transactions that we have? That has to be given out here. Then when you do this transaction, maybe print receipt. You print receipt, then after that, you eject the ATM. Now, those are few processes that you must work with them. And uh, I still want to use paint because of drawing. Uh, allow me to use that. And uh, I want to paste them somewhere there. And uh, these are the activities that we'll be using. One of the activity being key in password, insert card, verification, perform transaction, print, receipt, eject. But uh, who is doing that is the DB and the customer. Now, if you understand these use cases that we have, uh, and then we understand uh, maybe the actors that we have, uh, the next thing that comes in your mind is now, how will you draw them? So in the first scenario, we now come here and we start with the first actor. So we start with the first actor. Because these actors are only two, we can now present this actor somewhere here. So these two actors, one of them, we have customer. Allow me to use CS as customer. And allow me to use DB as the database system. Then there are some activities that has to be done here. They are not in order here. So how many activities? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six. Maybe we can have another one here. So this one is key in password. The next one is insert card. The next one is what you call verification. The next one is verification. Verification. Then the next one is now what you call perform transactions. Then we have print receipts. Then we have another one that we are calling eject. So for these activities that we are having here, there is one activity which is now performed transaction that has other activities that are depending on this process. And if they are depending, and I want to go to that first, eh? first of all, understand how we can be able to come up with a use case. So for this one, because we are performing transaction, we can create some relations. We have other relations. We have other some relations. Allow me to use that because of space. Eh? And this one that we are supposed to have uh, is withdraw. The next one that we are supposed to have uh, is deposit and the next one that we are supposed to have is transfer so these are relations that we are that are depending from this process that's why i have already presented it using the dotted arrows but that's why i'm saying i don't want to go to that extent for now where well, we are saying this uses this it uses this password so in here, if you're using relation, we use the keyword uses. We use the keyword uses. For this one, you use the keyword uses, and this one, you use the keyword uses. But for now, let us understand all the applications, all the activities that we are having, they are now within the PT. Now, the next question that we need to understand is now, how will you now 
try to interconnect because that interconnection is the one that we are calling interrelation. So for this interrelation that we have, we need now to ask ourselves who is maybe keying password. Is it the system which is keying the password or the user? If it is now the user, we connect with a straight line. In such kind, it is still a person who is now the customer. When you look at uh, when you look at verification, the system cannot uh, the user the customer cannot verify. So this is the one that is verified. Something to note here, and when you are doing a use case or when you are drawing a use case, uh, I, I, I'm not supposed to expect it. Is when you are drawing an arrow pointing to the actor. The arrow should not point to the actor. They are always point from actor to the use case. That is something noted on that. Then from this case, who verifies? This database verifies. Prints the receipt. The system print the receipt. Uh, sorry. This is perform transaction. This person performs transaction. And the same case, the system gives back the transaction. So those are two activities. This is one activity that is done by two people. One is the database as a, a hardware. The next one, or as a software, sorry. The next one is now a computer, a customer who is doing that. Who print the receipt? The system print the receipt. But who inject the system? Or is the system eject the card? Now, if you look at this, it's a very simple presentation of a use case. A very simple presentation of a use case. It's not a complicated one. But if you can look at this aspect, where we have a customer and we have another database, we have some boundaries. So we need to create a boundary. And the moment we are creating a boundary, we use a rectangle. So we are using a rectangle. So in this case, we can say this is creating a boundary from the outside world and the inside or the in-house world. Meaning all these are activities being performed by these actors. So the system and the users who are now the customers are now within the outside world as that kind of a presentation within that. So that is just a very simple presentation of a use case. Unless there is a question up to that point, maybe we can proceed. Eh? Then we'll be able to move to the next data presentation. So I am uh, maybe waiting for any question that you might be having at this time uh, so that we can proceed. Is there any question? I'm waiting for a question, please. So I have one person with no question. Please, I'm waiting for other questions. If you have another question, please ask before I proceed to our scenario.
So is there a question? Anna, Evans, Grace, Magara, Corinne, Teddy, do you have any questions? So please ask questions. Okay, so if there are no questions, please allow me to move to the relationships that we are supposed to use in this scenario. And uh, I want to use the diagram because I had already explained them. And uh, uh, these are optional when you're using them, but it is always preferable to use them the moment you want to interpret another connection that we have within the system. So most of these relations that we have, one of them is what you call the uses. And we are saying there's a type of relation a use case utilizes the service of another use case in order to realize its objective. So we can look at now, there is a use case, uh, maybe, uh, and that's why I'm saying, uh, uh, we don't use these uh, uses. Uh, I don't know whether I had uh, that diagram. We don't use use case uh, relationships in an actor. We don't use them. We use them in use cases. So if you find that now, like now in this, perform transaction. If you look at withdraw, requires, requires some association of this, or requires some uh, representation of uh, perform transaction. That's when we use uses. So we can say withdraw uses perform transaction. And that's why we must use uh, with this uh, less than side. So we are saying uh, we withdraw uses. Remember, we have a dot and line, and they are point to the parent. So we have part time, uh, perform transaction, sorry. And then we have withdraw. So this becomes a use case, and this becomes another use case. So those two use cases, they are depending from another use case that we have uh, uh, within the presentation. So in this case, eh, we can be able to understand that when you're using this use case, we have now to associate one use case with another use case. Then the next one is what you call in clones. Use case must incorporate the services of another use case in order to realize its objective. Just look at now, maybe we have uh, fees and uh, maybe a uh, health facility. For you to pay fees, you must, uh, maybe I can present this using a, a use case. Eh? So suppose now we are having pay fee. Pay fee, and then we have health. For you to be attended by a, a nurse, that is an university nurse, you must pay fee. So you go with the card, then this card must portray the full payment or the half payment according to the university strategies that we have. So in this one, we can say this, this health includes, includes paying fee. But when I say I want to go to the hospital, but I don't want to use pay fee. That is, you cannot use that as an include. So the moment you use include is when you are preferring to a use case that must depend from another class, but it must depend from it so that it can fulfill its objectives. So that's why we are saying, when you pay fee, you are now mandated to go to the hospital and you are supposed to be treated any disease that we have in that hospital, if it can be able to do that. So in this case, uh, include is part of the inclusive of what you call the, uh, the relationship that we have. Extend this means we are inheriting. There are some things that we are inheriting. So use case, inherit or extends the services of another use case. So if you can look at this, uh, use extends and uh, use case is somehow related because the service of another use case in order to realize its objective. So we are looking at now, it uses another class to realize its objective. 
So for this case, if you use include, eh, we must look at, uh, sorry, extends. We are looking at where we have a cross shape extends triangle. So triangle cannot perform any duty if it has not been defined in the shape. So you must define it in the shape so that it can have its own representation of that data. Then we have generalization. I think I talked about generalization is when you combine all the forms together from top to bottom and you'll be able to perform the function that we have. So we will be using these relations depending on the scenario that we have already been given or depending on what we have been given. And for now, uh, I want us maybe to first of all understand how we can be able to write or maybe come up with this structure or come up with this data presentation or come up with this use case eh, being given a certain scenario. And that's why I want to switch directly to the scenarios that I have. And uh, if you can see the scenario that I have already displayed, eh, you can see, I uh, hope you are seeing that scenario and it is clear. So uh, allow me to maybe expand it. Let me use, maybe I remove the italic, the italized. Uh, then maybe I can use some uh, spacing here so that, okay, it is okay. So this is the scenario that we are having here. This is the scenario that we are having. And uh, this is the stand of scenario, the st start of the scenario bureau concerning ZTEC main library. Required, identify the main actors in the scenario, draw a use case diagram based on the given scenario. And the scenario is this. So the first thing is to identify how many actors do we have? That is the first thing. So we come up with actors. So the first thing is to come up with actors. And which are these actors that you are having? So you read the scenario, you try to interpret the scenario, then come up with these actors. The library must keep track of the books. Read slowly, read slowly. So we can define this as an actor, and uh, maybe uh, I can use a table. Allow me to use a table if uh, you don't mind. So allow me to use that table. This one I call it an actor. So first of all, you start by drawing a, a scenario in uh, a design. Then we can look at uh, use case or use cases. So the first actor, which is the first actor? Read the scenario. I will read the scenario first without looking at which is the actor or not. The library must keep track of the books as they are purchased, cataloged in the library, circulated to library users, and those are the patrons, and eventually discarded when they wear out. Patrons have access to the library catalog to search the book catalog and to see whether the book is available. A patron can also reserve a title if all copies are checked out. Patrons can get a book on a loan and a circulation clerk will help them to do this by running a checkout procedure. The circulation clerk checks books in once these are returned. The stocking clerk keeps track of the arrival of the new books and enters the title into the library catalog. The library manager has their own activities. They need to print out reports of the book's title by the category. They also like to see what books are on the reserve and what books are overdue. When the book gets damaged or destroyed, the manager deletes the record for the copy of the book from the catalog. That is just a scenario. And uh, now we can start interpreting it. Uh, I don't know whether we will use this method of maybe somebody reading it and uh, maybe understanding, but for now I can interpret, we can interpret together the scenario. So the library must keep track of the books they are purchased. The library must keep track of the books as they are purchased. So in this case, eh, we have a system 
that we are calling a library as an actor. But this library, it is used to keep track. I will use short forms, keep track of books purchased. Catalog in the library, secreted to the library users. So we have another actor who is called users. And these are the ones that we are calling patrons. And eventually, so a library must keep track of the books as they purchased, catalog in the library, secret to the library users. And eventually discard when they wear out. So in this case, eh, we are looking at this system has other functions. So the next one that we have is now security to users. The next one that we have is now discard. Discard. So this person, uh, this system or the library is discarding. Patrons have access to library catalog to search the books. So this patron searches books, searches books from the catalog. I, I know uh, you have already used the catalog. When you're using the system in your libraries, the patron can also, uh, uh, patrons have access to the library catalog to search the book's catalog and to see whether the book is available. So when you are looking at this, eh, we need to look at the availability of the book. Availability or non-availability. So these are two use cases. So these are two functions that are depending from the search. So you can now try to come up with what you call uses, uses presentation. Patrons have access to library catalog such that, okay, a patron can also reserve a title. So we have another one. So reserve, reserve titles. So this one is one. Uh, maybe we can, uh, use dots to represent different scenarios. Then we have another one, which is this. So we have this, searches, reserves. Then we can still continue reading. The pattern can also reserve a title if all copies are checked out. So we look at copies checked out. So you reserve the titles if checked out. Patrons can get a book on a loan. So this patron gets a book. Get a book. And this one you are getting through a loan. You are getting through a loan. Patron can also reserve a title if all copies are checked out. Patrons can get a book on a loan, and a secretion clerk will help them to do this by running a checkout procedure. So we have another person who, who, who you are calling a clerk or secretion clerk. So we have secretion clerk, and uh, allow me to use short forms uh, checks out books checks out books then from there a patron uh -huh. patron can get a book on her own and the secretion clerk will help them to do this by running a checkout procedure this so here we are hiding the procedure for that checking out because you're assuming that this is only done by the circulation clerk. The circulation clerk 
checks the books in once these are returned. So here you check in. Checks in books. Checks in books. The, the stocking clerk keeps track of arrival. So this is another person whom we are calling the stocking clerk. Those are two different people. Stocking clerk. But uh, this stocking clerk keeps track, so we can say, keep track of arrival of new books. Of arrival of new books. Keep track of arrival of new books. And then, what does he do? Again, uh, of arrival of new books and enters the title in the library catalog. So here, enters title. Enter title. The library manager, here we have another one. So we have the library manager. So the library manager does what? So we can say the library manager as their own activity. They need to print out report or book title by category. So print out the report. Print out the report. So we can use that. Maybe we have other activities uh, that uh, this person is supposed to do. So print out the report of the titles. They also like to see what the books are on the reserve and what books are overdue. So we can look at now books are on the reserve and the overdue, the overdue, sorry. So we can have that. So checks, checks books that are overdue. When the book get damaged or destroyed, the manager deletes the record for what copies of a book from the catalog. So this person still, he is an overall of uh, deleting, deleting the books, deleting the books. So after we do that, uh, already we have the actors and uh, we have the use cases. So if you can look at the first person, uh, keeps the track, circulate to the users, discard. So when you discard this book, so it means this person has mandate of deleting. So this person has a mandate of deleting the book. Has a mandate of deleting a book. So we can say this person, the library, uh, the system itself deletes because now the manager has already done this. We can still look at now, keep track of the books purchased, circulated to the users. Who does that? Uh, check out the books. Check in the books. It's okay. Such as books from the catalog, etc. So from this uh, scenario, we can be able to look at now uh, how we can be able to give out, or maybe to can you can be able to come up with what you call uh, the data presentations. And that is why we need to use this scenario. And I will leave it the way it is. Eh? Uh, maybe I will leave it the way it is. The moment you are reading your notes, you will be able now to draw this. And I want to see it. Maybe next time you will be able to draw it to come up with a clear one, uh, maybe given uh, some uh, presentation of. Uh, uh, this scenario uh, that we have. So uh, I, I would like maybe you ask a question before we proceed, eh? because I might be talking and uh, maybe we are not in the same page. We might be talking, but uh, we are not in the same page. Any question up to that point, please?
So do you have any other question? So I have already received uh, maybe a communication yeah. from Doreen. I have received a communication from Doreen, others. Anna, do you, do you have any question? Evans? Evans, do you have any question? Grace? Magara Kefa? Corinne, do you have any question? Teddy, do you have any question? Okay, so I think we are in the same page. Eh? Uh, because of uh, maybe uh, the diagram, because I have already presented the, the diagram for this scenario, I would like maybe you take your time and draw this use case that we have here, uh, that we have already, I have already given out here, and try to come up with a given presentation like this. Eh? And uh, allow, uh, maybe we can uh, still use what you call the boundaries. Make sure that you have boundaries to separate the external and internal services of a, a given project that we have. So uh, I, I want to go directly. I want to go directly to the activity diagram, which is another part of uh, which is uh, which is another part of what you call uh, the behavioral diagrams. And with these behavioral diagrams that we have, uh, maybe we can be able to understand these activity diagrams. And they work the same as uh, the use case, but uh, now what changes is now how we should be able to present this. So in this, we are looking at now the flow of activity from one point to another. How do this uh, activity flow? If you look at maybe the presentation, like now, just look at now the moment you wake up, which activity do you start with? So I always start with uh, maybe praying God, or maybe I wake up and I go outside there, eh? or maybe I go to school, then I come to bed. Maybe those are the, the procedure. But I don't think that we can be able to understand here. These are the process that we can do without looking at there is activity that is superior than the other. We are looking at that scenario, making sure that these activities are performed, but there is only one activity which cannot be performed before the other. If you perform it before the other, now that is not a clear processing. Like just look at an example, maybe when you wake up, what do you do? I wake up, I bathe, maybe. Uh, then after that, uh, maybe we take tea or you take breakfast. Then after that, you take the bag, you go to a, uh, to a bus station, then you go to school. But we cannot say we wake up, then we go to school, then we come to the bus station. Those are activities that has to follow each other. So that's why we are saying activity works the same as the use case. But now if you can get the difference between the use case is that use case doesn't follow a procedure. It doesn't follow a procedure. But... An activity follows. Activity follows. When you look at now, uh, in the use case, use case is easy to implement. But on the other side, eh, this is not easy to implement. So you look at now, we have some challenges in implementing the use. Uh, in implementing the activity diagram and uh, when you are implementing this uh, diagram we look at now the operations which are supposed to be done so in some books we call them workflows and these are the ones that we are saying workflows are the interaction of the automated system human system human actors and different organization so here we can say uh is easy in uh, is easy but not easy <laughs> you 
look at these activities that So if you look at the activities that you are supposed to perform, uh, we need to understand that these workflows that we are having, okay, uh, I have a question here. I did not get what you say that use case does not follow procedure, or oh, but activities does. Eh? Okay, in this case, eh, uh, Paulin, eh, what I'm saying is, if you look at the use case that we have already come up with, eh, uh, we don't know which start with this, uh, with what. So if you keep key in key uh, password. We don't start with key in password. We start with the insert card. So when you use an activity diagram to organize them, first of all, we insert card. Then after that, we key in password. Then the next one, we verify. So that's why I'm saying, when you're using a use case, there is no, pros, uh, use case, there is no procedure followed eh? when you are laying out these activities or these processes. By the moment we are using a use case, uh, an activity diagram, we must follow a certain procedure. Meaning, this activity cannot be done if, or this activity three cannot be done if activity one and two has not been done. Activity one, activity two depend on activity one. Activity three depend on activity one and activity two. So that is what we are saying in that scenario. So in this case, eh, uh, I think maybe I have communicated that. Have I communicated that, Pauline? Or can I repeat? Is there any question? Maybe, uh, can I repeat? Pauline? Pauline is offline. Eh? Yes, Pauline? Okay, it's understood. Okay, so what we are saying is, uh, let me go back to these uh, differentiations that we have here. We have said use case does not does not for a procedure, but an activity diagram. Uh, allow me to use this. Eh? I'm sorry for the typing error, but activity diagrams follows. Use case is easy to implement, but when you use an activity, it is not easy because if you omit a certain activity, that model will not work. It's like now we are coming up with Vika Superhighway, and then we omit maybe a certain diversion automatically. Will you be going to town, then you come back to that diversion so that we can move to that direction. So we look at that point now, you need to look at a clear model that you can be able to come up with. When you still use what you call the use case, eh? uh, in terms of uh, data presentation, uh, use case and uh, activities and uh, activity, it has a clear presentation. You can see who is doing this. You can see the clear flow of the information. And that's why we are saying in use case, we don't combine activities. We split them. But in the activity diagram, you can combine them. Remember, if you look at this question that we were doing here, we were looking at perform transaction. But we said we must introduce eh, the other activities here. And we are not combining them. So we must, pro uh, we must introduce them and we use use case or use use. But in when we talk about the activity diagram, we look at the general approach. This is a human being who is eh, demonstrating a certain activity. That is now demonstration. Demonstration has demonstrating uh, maybe procedure of cooking, demonstrating the procedure of movement, demonstrating the procedures of the reading. So all these are being performed in one uh, presentation. So that's why we say we have now, we combine, combine activities. We combine activities in activity diagram in activity diagram but we split we split but we split activities in the use case we split the activities in use case so if you can be able to understand those differentiations 
now we are okay so for the procedure i think it has been explained here activity are there for you to show both the sequential that is the procedure uh as sorry as well as as given in your notes as well as concurrent flow of activities in a system so you can show all the activities that are done at the same time but in use case you cannot show all the activities that are done at the same time that is one disadvantage still we have activities that are done in a activity diagram you can show them concurrently how they are being performed concurrently and i think you understand what is the meaning of the word concurrent because concurrent means uh you can perform this eh, as you perform another one. maybe i can withdraw money at the same time maybe i can be uh doing some uh, balance maybe looking at the balance maybe looking at the message that is coming on my phone uh through the system maybe it is setting and then the system is now uh resulting on giving out the output uh, on a mobile phone an activity result in some actions uh, which leads to the changes in state so we are looking at now which changes so that's why we are saying they must follow procedure because the procedure one now determine whether we will have procedure two the procedure two determine whether we will have procedure three so if procedure three is not complete now automatically procedure three will not be given out so we must always make sure that the activities are done the way they are supposed to be done uh, i want to go directly to these shapes that we always have and uh, allow me to use paint eh, again uh, for me to draw this and uh, to explain if you look at the first one we always use a start it is a circle but inside that circle uh, maybe i can use it is a small circle but inside that small circle it is dotted then we have an arrow this means is the start Then we have another one, which start with an arrow and then end with a circle. But we can still have another circle inside, but it is dotted. We have a, a small, uh, we have a bigger circle, which is not dotted or shaded, but we have an inner circle, which, which is shaded. This means it is end of an activity. Then we can have another one, uh, which we form what you call join join these are activities so we can have activity one activity two and activity three so this activity that is here is the one that is resulting to activity a b c d maybe option if i look at the question of a banking uh, we take option we take option and uh, the option was uh, perform transaction so perform transaction allows you to withdraw, allows you to deposit, and allows you to transfer. And these ones, we use rectangle, but this rectangle is a curved rectangle. It is a curved rectangle. So in this case, we can say this activity that is here. So this forms what you call join and this bar is what you call synchronization bar and uh, that's why we are saying we do this activity we can do this activity but this activity can be done at the same time if you look at these notes that we have here this is the shape that you are saying start but uh, if i look at the diagrams that i have here they are not clearly drawn eh? because if you look at this shape inside it we have a shaded one means add that is the final state then we have activities that we have then we have decision and i think this one is not new to you because when you look at decision we are looking at now uh, alternatives so either do one alternative you do one activity or if it fails you do the other one and then we can be able to complete with that and that's why we have what you call the condition guide so you have yes or no then we have the the flow the flow which is de uh, defined with a, a straight arrow and then we have what you call the join and the fork 
So I'm sorry for this. This was supposed to be fork. I'm sorry. So this is the fork. This is the fork. But now, if you change this, eh, you have activity one. You have another activity. And you have another activity here. And we have a synchronization bar. But this synchronization bar, now, when you combine this synchronization bar, forms one activity. So many activity forming other activity. This is the one that we are calling join. This one is now the one we call fork. So one activity distributing to multiple activities. Many activity distributing to only one activity. Maybe withdraw, deposit, transfer. At the end, you must print the receipt. So that one can be termed as a, what you call the join. So this is one that we are calling synchronization. Synchronization bar. Synchronization bar. And if you look at these notes that we have, uh, we are saying we have the synchronization bar. Well, this is now the synchronization, this line. And uh, there's some things that we need to look at because these are diagrams that we need to use. Uh, when you are presenting our baby scenarios, remember, make sure that you understand these diagrams. And uh, when you understand them, we will be able now to understand on how we can be able to draw these eh, following some procedural uh, way here. And uh, these are the, now the rules. Activity diagram have an, uh, has an initial state of which we have already defined them. Because now we are looking at these diagrams the way they are supposed. So you cannot have an end when you don't have a start. You must have a trans, uh, transition movement from one point to another. But we cannot say we are adding if you don't have transitions. So those transitions that we have now forms the end uh, representation of uh, what we need to have uh, within the uh, scenarios. I can use uh, the, the, the simple presentation here, uh, which now we are saying we can still use the ATM, the transaction of uh, ATM, maybe preparing uh, and serving coffee. Now, when you are preparing and serving coffee, maybe what are we supposed to do? When you're using the ATM transaction, what are we supposed to do? Remember, we had uh, started with the ATM. Maybe I can use the ATM. So for this case, uh, uh, maybe we can remember so the first one we need to start uh when you start what are the activities that are supposed to be performed so you can maybe say that here uh, maybe we are doing something of which we'll come to that so the first thing is to insert 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 card insert card then when you insert card what are we supposed to do afterwards so you can enter password enter password so after entering password what else are you supposed to do now remember this person might uh, be having two options one it is either correct or it is not correct so you can have andization. So if this password is correct, if this one is false, so maybe if this one is false, maybe what can uh, what else can we do? Maybe we can go back and we enter this password. So if you can look at this diagram, it's like a flowchart diagram. It's like a flowchart. For this case, eh, if it is now correct, if it is true, what else can you do? So here we are looking at now uh, the system verifies, verification. So when you verify, what else can you do? So allow me to start at the top, but it is a continuation. What else can you do? So in this case, eh, you can do some activities. One of them, you can do what you call withdraw. So I can use withdraw. I can have another one. 
deposit. Maybe I can have another one. I can have another one, which is now transfer. But these ones, they must form one activity. So which is this activity that you are forming? So you form one activity, and this activity is now what you call print receipt. Then after you print receipt, what are we supposed to do? You eject the card. Remember these rectangles are curved at those four corners that we have. Then after that, we can do what you call add. That is very easy to implement still, but somehow complicated if you don't know how the activities are supposed to be portrayed within the presentation. Are we getting? Are we getting what you are drawing here? Sorry, are we getting what you are drawing? Are we getting? Okay, okay, there is a question here whether we are supposed to use connectors. We can still use connectors, uh, Kefa, and uh, that one is even good eh, when I use it somewhere here. I use it somewhere here, uh, then I do away with this line. Maybe let me rub this line. I can rub this line. Maybe we, if you are moving to the next line or to the next page, so instead of uh, drawing like that, we can use that connector. And here we present a line like that. And here we use this connector. So for this case, we use this connector, a very small one. It is optional. We don't have any issue when you're using it. It is optional. We can use it or we use it the way I have used it. So there is no harm. No harm when you're using that. So I, I hope I have uh, responded to that, Kefa. Okay, do we have any question? Do we have any question? Do you have any question? Okay, do you have any question? Teddy, 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 are we in class? Anna, are we in class? You can use your mic to communicate. Are we understanding? Okay, so, uh, okay. So we can proceed. Can we proceed? There are some people I have not gotten an answer from them. Uh, Anne, Anna, are you in class? Evans, are you in class? Grace, are you in class? Evans, are you in class? Evans, come on. Grace, Jerry. Okay, so I can proceed. So in this case, eh? uh maybe we can look at uh, another scenario here uh so this scenario that we have here we can still come up with uh, uh we can still come up with what you call uh, the activity diagram and uh, what we need to understand is now we know all these actors so here we are not interested with the actor 
here we are interested with these functions. And if you look at this question, eh, the library must keep track of the books as, so we can have a start, then we say keep track of the books, then after we keep track, what else can you do? So if you look at this procedure that we have already written here, are uh, the ones that we are supposed to come up with an active diagram. Uh, I don't want to do some uh, analysis on this and say maybe you have already understood, unless maybe I give you or I post a question that you can give me actors so that we can be able to understand. So for this case, eh, uh, we need to understand that uh, the activity diagrams can also use what you call the swim lines. And the moment we are using the swim lines, uh, we say they tell you what happens, but they do not tell you what to do or what uh, how you did it. So the only thing that you need to look at in swim, uh, swim lines, that means that uh, you can be able to convey uh, different presentations in departmental level. And that's why we are saying, once the characteristic of an active diagram is that they tell you what happens, but they do not tell you what does what. This means that the diagram does not convey which people or departments are responsible for each activity. So in this case, uh, we can say, let's try to create some uh, groups of different communications. And this different communication is where we can say, this is group X, this is group Y. So we can use those swim lines. But uh, in most cases, we don't use swim lines because now when you are using swim lines is when you are trying to create some groups. We say there is a group for student, there is a group for registering, there is a group for that, 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 etc. So that's why we are saying a way around this is to use what is defined to as swim lines, which combines the activity diagrams, the depiction of logic with interaction diagrams, the depiction of the responsibility. And that's why we can say, if activity A, B, C, D was supposed to be performed at the same time, let's combine it at once. You present it at once through the use of what you call the swim lines. So for this case, eh, uh, I have already given out the advantages and disadvantages of activity diagrams. And uh, I would post at that point, eh, or maybe we will end at that point, because we have already exhausted eight minutes, and uh, eight minutes maybe we need to create an awareness whether we have understood eh, of what we have covered, so that next time we'll be able to do another scenario before we move to others for use case, and uh, maybe we draw it. Then after drawing it, then we can be able now to understand it. Then after we understand it, I will give you an assignment that you are supposed to do. Then after doing that, we will be able now uh, to go to the other diagram. So next week I'm expecting Maybe I can complete on eh, coming up with a scenario. Then we draw an activity diagram. We try to understand it. Then after understanding it, then we can go to dynamic modeling. But what I can urge you is I will post a question that we are supposed to try uh, for these minutes that are remaining or these hours that are remaining. Remember the class is supposed to end at 5, but it is 3.47. So I'm uh, letting you now to give me all the actors or maybe to come up with the activity diagrams Given that we have a scenario that I will post in that portal, then after that, maybe we can go to the next one. A uh, diagram that we are supposed to go to, which is dynamic. So we are almost ending with our UML diagrams. Remember, we have already covered two diagrams. We are remaining with seven. So when we cover next week two, we will be remaining with five. So I'm expecting maybe we will have uh, that revision of those diagrams using some softwares that I will be able to uh, maybe to give you a hand eh, to use them. And uh, we'll be using uh, Visio as a software. So is there any question up to that point? Am I allowed to move to the portal to post a question that you're supposed to do for those remaining time? Then we create a discussion for those questions that you have uh, done at that time. Am I around to move to the next uh, to the next session?
Okay, majority has responded. So can we move to the portal? Give me five minutes. I'll post that question. I, I think you can give me five minutes. So uh, we can start that from 3.55. Eh? And please, I'm urging you, any cut or any exam or anything that we do in this platform, whether it is a, a quiz, eh? we must do it because we are still using those marks. We are grading. So that will be a determinant whether you will do the end term exam. So if you not have done anything that I have already posted in this platform, uh, maybe uh, we will have an issue. Remember this, we are using a system. Uh, I cannot have a faith in it. And I say maybe uh, I can have mercy on you. And then I say I will give you a takeaway card. No. So please make sure that you did you do everything. So that now, after you do everything, we will be able now to grade you accordingly. Yes, Doreen, I, I can see you are typing. I'm waiting for that. Okay, okay. Do you have any question? Anybody with a question? Doreen, yes, do you have a question? I can see you are typing. Mm, okay, okay. Dolin, Colin Nataka Kupotea Bana. Yes, I can understand. Uh, okay. It will still be provided, but I would urge you to do it. If you can do it at this time, you do it, please. It will still be provided on that platform, but if you can do it, please do it at this time because you still have a discussion. Yes, Porin. Okay, let us move to the portal so that we can do that question. <laughs> 